Good afternoon and welcome to today's planning committee meeting. My name is Councillor David Connor and I'm chairman of, the Fen of this planning committee here at Fenland. I welcome those members of the public and press in attendance and those who are watching the live, live stream this meeting on YouTube. Whilst this meeting is being held publicly, it is also being streamed via YouTube. The minutes of the meeting will be reduced in the usual way and a recording of the meeting will be available to view on the YouTube until such times that the meetings are produced. The minutes are produced. Please be aware that the only audio from the microphones will be captured on the live stream. Therefore, those invited to speak need to ensure their microphones are on when speaking and are as close to the microphones as, per as possible. To enable the meeting to run in an orderly manner, can all present keep their microphones off except when invited to speak? Please ensure that the microphone is turned off when you finish speaking. I would also ask that everyone ensures their mobile phones are on silent or turned off for the duration of the meeting. With regard to the meeting, I must ask members of the public to refrain from interrupting. The only members of the public allowed to speak are those who have registered to do so. Anyone who speaks must do so in a respectful and a polite manner. It's right there is meaningful discussion about the merits of the application, but we will not allow inappropriate language or personal attacks on councillors and their beliefs on members of the public or on officers' professional advice. We will now go to agenda item number one, and I would like to ask member services if we have any apologies for absence. Thank you. Thank you. We've had apologies from Councillor Imaphidon, and Councillor Purser is substituting for him. Thank you, Elaine. Now we'll go to agenda item number two, which is urgent items. Again, there are none, so on to three. Agenda item three is the declaration of interest. Member services will now go to each councillor in turn, and can you please state if you have anything to declare in relation to the on any agenda item today? Of course, this being the only one, but please, Elaine, thank you. Councillor Benny. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm a member of Chatteris Town Council. Uh, whenever this when he made our applications come up, I have left the room. I've always declared that I am on the planning committee, but I've left the room when every discussion has taken place with this, so I've had no part of the uh, decision making or voting on it. Councillor Connor. Yes, thank you, Elaine. I've been lobbied on this application uh, before this afternoon. I'm still of an open mind and will make my decision on the basis of listening to the speakers and, of course, the planning officer's report. Thank you. Councillor Mrs. Davis. Nothing to declare relevant to this application other than, of course, I have been lobbied. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Mrs French. Uh, thank you. Yes, I have been lobbied, um, but I do um, look at this as an open mind. I'm also a member of Knightley's Internal Drainage Board. Councillor Hicks. <coughs> yes, I've also been lobbied, but I've still got an open mind on this, so nothing to declare. Councillor Marks. I'm a member of Maney in Chatteris North, uh, FDC, a councillor. I have attended Chatteris uh, Town Council previously, but it's never been nothing to do with when he's ever been discussed. Um, and I'm still remain open minded. Councillor Purser. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, yes, I have been lobbied, like all others, but um, I still have an open mind, so nothing else to declare. Yep, thank you, councillor. Thank you, Elaine. Uh, just now, before we go to the main part of the meeting, yeah, now, so... Councillor Benny. Yeah, I forgot to add that I've been lobbied on this with email and written correspondence as well, but I've got a very open mind on this one. Yep, thank you, Councillor Benny. Um, now, w just before we go to the main part of the meeting, uh, Sophie, our legal officer, would like to make a statement, please, Sophie. Thank you. Thank you. So it's just to state that the Secretary of State has recently received a request to consider calling in this planning application and they've asked the planning officer to let them know the outcome of this application after the committee meeting today. Thank you, Sophie. Now we'll go to the main part of the meeting, the planning application. Proposals are now being dealt with, with a, slightly, a slightly different way. Members should still only make a proposal when invited to do so. However, in the interests of time management, I will be looking for a proposal to go with officer recommendation. Clearly, if no proposal is forthcoming, or if that proposal fails, I will be then looking for a proposal to against, go against the recommendation. But members are reminded that 
any such proposal should be accompanied by the planning reasons for doing so. So now, without further ado, I'll hand over to uh, Richard Conroy, he's the Senior Development Officer, to present application F-YR21-0981F, agenda item number four. So when you're ready, Richard, please, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> item four, this application relates to the erection of 93 dwellings um, with associated garages, parking and landscaping. It comes before the planning committee because of the number of representations current, co contrary to the recommendation. So the land that question the application site is situated on the southern section of Chatteris. It's positioned north of Winnie Road um, and a pro um, slightly set back west of the Isle of Ely um, bypass or way. It's situated north of the Wenny Estate. You can see where it's positioned in relation to the existing um, Chattera settlement boundary, um, which um, you can see that the settlement itself wraps around it to the south. There's also been recent planning permissions further south of um, the Wenny Estate, which have recently gained planning consent. Uh, there's an aerial image on the right that shows the Wenny Meadow as it's now known at the moment. Um, also positioned to the north west is the original manor house. This is a grade two listed building. This aerial image, I think, better shows the relationship between the various aspects that I was just mentioning. Wenny Road Meadow is situated lo um, centrally within this satellite aerial. You can see how the meadow itself is slightly colored differently to the sort of agricultural land that's situated further south and also to the east of the Isle of Ely Way. Um, Chatteris Main Town Centre is positioned north. You also have Cromwell Community College, which is located to the west of the application site. Um, it's very important, this, this slide actually, of the presentation, because this shows the East Chatteris Broad Concept Plan. Um, this application site that we're, we're looking at today um, is a crucial aspect of that. That brings forward 93 homes of an anticipated 350 homes uh, of this broad concept plan, which already has been approved. Um, it's, uh, ho hopefully, the, for, hopefully online this is a little bit clearer, but what you will see is the section of the site on the western side, which is approximately 40% of the application site, is to be left open as public open space, essentially a park, a new park for residents, existing residents and future residents. There would also be built form. Um, it's described as park side on the eastern section, which comprises around 60% of the site. Um, and there's also links through this site to the wider BCP, to Elms Park to the north, um, and other um, segments of the BCP further, further north and east. So this is the proposed site plan. Um, I think initially it's quite obvious that it follows the general principles of what you've just seen in the broad concept plan. Um, effectively, you've got 40% of new public open parkland to the west, um, approximately 60% built form, which, which, which consists of new housing on the eastern section with three suds. Um, which are ponds and swales, which deal with the drainage issues on the site. Um, you have two access points from Wenny Road, which um, break off from Wenny Road, to, um, aligned north. Um, the western, the western access point forms a barrier, a visual barrier between the new public park space and the new development. This scheme was required to provide two access points despite usually seeing schemes like this having one um, because this will deliver a crucial access to the wider BCP as well. So it was, a, it was very important that we secure two access points, not just for this scheme that you see before you today, but also the access through on the northern section, which you can see just to the very north mm -hmm. of this plan. Also, the western public open space is also set aside for protection 
because there's a important archaeological um, um, evidence below furrows and um, historical agricultural use of this site. Um, you can also see in this plan the position of the greater locally, or sorry, statutory listed building to the northwest, which is the manor house um, and associated, associated buildings. Again, this is the landscaping plan. I think this shows more clearly the level of green space that's being provided in this scheme. So you're having the public new park on the western section, but you still have permeability through the wider site in the eastern side as well. Um, links uh, a new cycle pedestrian path that runs east-west, connecting through to Cromwell Community College. Uh, it runs just north of the main green green landscape kind of um, barrier along Wenny Road. Um, there's two, the two access roads running north are tree lined, so they'll, they'll provide attractive, visually attractive spaces and street scenes. Uh, the, the, the built pattern proposed before you today is it, it's a generally quite um, uh, typical layout you'd see for a residential development of this nature with um, larger properties usually being positioned along the main primary roads with smaller, tighter knit homes positioned further back um, where they're less visible from the main roads. Again, this plan, you can see the connection point to the wider BCP on the north. And you can also see the suns, the large pond on the northeast, and also the, the leap positioned as you enter the site on the south um, east. It's probably worth pointing out as well that the positioning of the leap is, is beneficial in the sense that it benefits from natural surveillance from the houses that are along the tree line um, primary roads. Uh, yeah, that's probably... This is an important crossing improvement plan that's been secured by the council. This is a new pedestrian cycle link between what will be the new public park and Cromwell Community College. Uh, we undertook a site visit yesterday and some queries were raised about this, but I, I can assure members of the public and members of the committee that this has a stage one safety audit. Um, the county council has reviewed it and they consider it to be safe and actually an improvement on what currently is provided. This is a typical um, end of terrace property that's being delivered. This is a two bed, um, two up, two down effectively house. The details and materiality will be secured by condition. This is the sort of layout you have benefit from passive natural um, ventilation through the, the houses themselves. They're efficient in terms of their layout and in terms of energy efficiency. Um, and obviously they're all dual aspect, which obviously provides future occupiers with um, a high quality of accommodation as well. And they do meet the national technical standards in terms of internal space. Um, in terms of private external and new space, the properties also comply with the new emerging local plan policy. Um, none of the houses have less than one third of their plot as garden space. This is um, just a typical street scene that's being created within the built farm uh, the new build form development. Um, if you can see the top <laughs> street scene is actually the, if you were standing on the eastern side of the site where there's a public right of way and you were viewing, looking westwards, that's effectively what you would see in this new development. So you can see there's lots of um, break, breaking points between the new properties themselves. So you can see through, there's, there's a nice street rhythm um, there's change in materiality between the properties, adding visual interest, um, and there's a nice um, proportions in terms of the fenestration and the windows and the various styles that, that are being provided. Um, the, the lower street scene is positioned, it's CC on the, on the plan on the bottom left corner, if you can see that, and um, that's facing north. You can just about see on the side, on the left hand side of that street scene, one of the larger houses that would actually face onto the new public park. And you can see that that's a little deeper and 
um, probably a little grander and obviously would create a nice um, sense of arrival at that park space. So these are some of the site photos. This is Wayne Road. Um, I mentioned th there's an existing landscape barrier along that road space, along the pavement. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the one on the left is facing southward. The one on the right is facing northward towards the town centre. The photograph on the left is the public right away that's being retained, that's off of the site and it will not be affected by the proposal, but there will be um, pedestrian linkages onto it. On the right, that's, to, that's within the application site itself, and that faces towards the statutory listed building, which is actually just slightly to the right, top right corner, um, but it does show the nearest residential properties to the application site itself, and these existing properties would be positioned some distance away from any of the new dwellings that are proposed here today. Okay, this is within the site again, within the new public park space, and this is facing towards where the new improvement, um, cycle pedestrian improvement would be positioned to any road. Some of the landscaping would be removed along this space to improve visibility. Um, and then a crucial new pedestrian cycle point provided to the the college nearby. Again, this is a view within the application site towards the manor house, and this would be within the new public park. All this space would be the new public park, which would be safeguarded for future residents. So if, if I just may summarize just for a moment, the proposed scheme will deliver the first of the expected phases, which is 93 dwellings of the East Chatteris allocation which cumulatively will provide approximately 350 new homes. The proposal is in broad accordance with the adopted BCP for the area and would not prevent the rest of the BCP proposals from being implemented. The principle of housing growth in this location is established and compliant with policies LP7 and LP10 of the Fenland Local Plan and adopted national policies. So the report before you today, which I'm, I'm sure members have read, this has weighed the heritage harm identified from the proposal against the public benefits of the scheme, which includes the delivery of an integral phase of this allocated housing site. It's expected to deliver needed housing for the district, um, which, which I give moderate weight, um, given the proportion of affordable housing. This says 10%, but the, the agent has confirmed that um, that's been increased, increased to 12% at the moment. Also, a, contr a financial contribution is now also being offered of 28%, despite a financial viability assessment stating that the scheme would be unviable to provide such a contribution. So that is... An uh, there was a slight error there. Uh, it was £28,000 oh, and 28%. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> The, um, but the, the, I think the most important public benefit of the scheme is the provision of a public open space, a park. Um, and I've given substantial public weight to that, um, as well as the economic and health benefits, which I afford moderate benefits to. So overall, the public benef benefits are considered to outweigh the harm to the heritage asset. Um, Despite knowing that this, there is informal use of this private land, um, the public do, do need to be aware that it is private land and it could, it could be, you know, access to it could be restricted. So securing its formal use as a public open space is, it should be given a lot of weight. Um, it, was, it will provide obviously a very high quality biodiverse space as well. Um, that's considered to be in compliance with policy LP2 and LP16 of the local plan. Um, in terms of biodiversity specifically, because the report goes into a lot of detail on this, I think it's worthwhile recognizing that the Fenland Wildlife Officer feels that the proposal is acceptable and that the agent has um, met every national and legislative obligation required of them in order to um, have the scheme approved and meet the policy in terms of biodiversity. The scheme is considered to provide um, a neutral um, or greater level of um, enhancement in terms of biodiversity. They achieved this through an off-site enhancement in March, Gold Road, um, and a biodiversity enhancement management plan will be secured through the section 6 to ensure those details are acceptable to us. 
Um, the development currently provides 12% affordable contribution and £28,000 that's been mentioned. Um, and overall is considered to meet the aspirations of the East Chatteris BCP um, and therefore should be recommended or should be approved. Thank you. Chairman. Yeah, thank you, Richard. We have four sets of speakers on this application. First, I'd like to invite Councillor Alan Gowler on behalf of Chatteris Town Council to make his presentation to the committee. You have five minutes, Councillor Gowler. Thank you. Good afternoon, speaking on behalf of Charis Town Council regarding what is a highly controversial application, as you've seen, seeks to erect 93 dwellings on land north of Wenya Estate in Charis on an area locally known and also referred to throughout the agenda as Wenya Meadow. The proposed development was or is part of the overall East Charis broad concept plan. From a town council point of view, it's a relief that this application has finally reached the stage where it can be considered by this committee. Uh, it's since first considering this application as consultees nearly two years ago, in August 2021, the town council have taken quite a bit of stick from local residents, particularly on so social media. Um, I'm bringing this up as I could say quite a lot more about it, I don't think now's the time, but I'm bringing it up because I would like this to be the opportunity to speak out about it and hopefully prevent it happening again with any future applications. Um, you know, I mean, this has come down to us being accused of taking backhanders, brown envelopes, and the fact that I'm now sitting here and talking in objection to the application should hopefully allay any fears that people out of that. Um, so the Town Council have in effect been used as easy targets for uh, supporters of um, the campaign, um, despite being one of many consultees for the application. This has been exasperated by literally no action being taken by the landowners to attempt to protect what is a considerable investment, particularly by allowing members of the public to continue to use what is privately owned land for recreational purposes. It would have been very simple to erect signs around the site to either request that the public keep out or at least make them aware that it is private and not public land. This application has attracted 551 objections on the planning portal and the parish poll held last year returned a result of 92% of people in favour of designating the area as protected local green space and hence being against the proposed development. It is without doubt very unpopular with the residents of Chatteris and whilst planning decisions are not made based on popularity, the reasons, reasons and justification behind this fierce resistance to the application should be very carefully considered. Despite having supported the application on two of the three occasions it's been presented to Charis Town Council as consultees, the most recent amendment seeks to offset biodiversity to another site in March, over eight miles away from the actual site as, quote, no site closer to Chatteris could be found. As a town council, we deem this is totally and utterly unacceptable, and it is a, an effective slap in the face to the majority of residents in the town who are against the development anyway. Whilst this may or may not be a, an acceptable legal method of meeting biodiversity requirements, it's quite clearly a loophole. Section 10.113 of the agenda clearly states that the construction of this application will result in real-term loss of on-site biodiversity. It's also of great concern that through the vast array of information provided on the agenda for this meeting, there are various references to the BCP for which this development is part of. At 10.7 in the agenda, it clearly states that in the emerging local plan that the BC allocation along with this application site does not feature and is now shown as local green space it goes on to state that the emerging plan is at an early stage and that very little weight can be given to it. In fact, the term emerging local plan is mentioned 22 times throughout this agenda and it is therefore extremely contradictory to consider on one hand to give very little weight to it, but on the other hand to use it to support various other arguments in favour of the application. 
it also brings into question as to what is happening with the overall BCP. If this development is granted, but the rest of the allocated land is removed from the forthcoming local plan, then it clearly means that many of the supporting arguments for this application will become defunct. Also, while it is a regular source of debate here, it is only correct to point out that Charles Town Council are extremely disappointed with the very low Section 106 contributions, something that we consider the condition of initially supporting seconds. this application when we were first consulted on it. In conclusion, despite having previously judged this application acceptable, given the information at the time on the first two occasions we were consulted on it, Chatteris Town Council cannot support this in its current form. Thank you for your time. I'm open to any questions. Yep, okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Gowler. Members, questions, cl any clarifications to Mr Gowler, please, members? Have we got any? Councillor Marks, thank you. Good afternoon, Councillor Gowler. Thank you for that. Um, right, okay. Can you clarify something for me? Uh, everybody keeps talking about a meadow. I can't find any thing looking back in, in history that it says actually meadow until about 10 years ago when people started talking about it being a meadow. Do you, can you clarify that situation for me, please? So I'm born and bred from Chatteris from a sense. Um, my memories of this land when I was a kid was that they made us run through it on cross country where I was mostly interested in not turning my ankle. Um, it certainly wasn't called a meadow at that point. It appears, as you've said, to be a, a, a recent coin phrase amongst residents. Um, it, interestingly enough, it, seem, it does seem to have been adopted in the fact that throughout the document I read in great detail over the weekend, it does appear to be called, called it Wenny, Wenny Meadow throughout it. Um, and certainly all local people know where you mean if you say Wenny Meadow. Um, I think as we saw on one of the maps shown on the thing, I think even Google Maps is now showing it as Wenny Meadow. Thank you, but you would actually agree it's an open space, privately owned. It is certainly privately owned. Um, it's certainly an open space. It's a green space. Um, yeah. Thank you. Okay, members, any questions for Mr. Council Gowler? Can't see any burning desire to. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Earl. <laughs> Now, without further ado, I'd like to invite Councillor James Carney, he's a district councillor, to make his presentation to the committee. You too have five minutes when you're ready. Thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you for allowing me the opportunity to uh, speak to you all this afternoon. Um, yes, uh, I'm Councillor Jan Carney, and I am a uh, ward councillor for Chatters North and Mainy, which uh, immediately joins this site in question. Um, and I'm here this afternoon uh, because I've been contacted by uh, several of my constituents, um, who also are th among those who, among the 551 people who have objected. Um, Obviously, because it's very close proximity, but as as Councillor Gall has already explained, it's uh, something which has obviously um, created a, a great deal of debate and passion throughout the town. Um, so the, the four points which um, which I wish to outline, um, I'm sure that we'll go, be going through in detail during the meeting, but um, certainly the, uh, the biodiversity question seems to be top of the list, um, whichever way you look at it. And certainly, uh, as Councillor Gall has already uh, stated, that uh, when the most recent um, a proposal put into offset that biodiversity over at March, um, it just seemed like... Um, it just seemed a, a bit of a fobbing off exercise when you take into account the the age of the uh, the piece of, of, of land in question and when you actually look at the physical makeup of it it's totally different to what's being proposed at Gall Road March which is uh, essentially been you know sort of um, relatively speak um, 
the impact upon local services and infrastructure is another one that people um, have come to me about and also I know it's been um, sort of very widely discussed on, on uh, social media but also the representations made on the planning portal um, and certainly this kind of leads into the fact that the 106 contribution um, which at this moment in time stands at £28,000 when education, the NHS, the ambulance service and library services have all been consulted and their individual calculations uh, with the exception of the library service but all of the others um, exceed that £28,000. Um, so therefore that's something I think needs to be discussed and um, deliberated during this afternoon proceedings. And the final point that people have spoken to me about is about concerns over waterlogging of the site, um, that if homes were to be built on the Gwenny Meadow, would they themselves be affected by excess water and potential flooding issues? But more to the point, would it then create um, additional flooding issues for the existing properties that surround the site? Um, certainly looking through the, um, the, the members' pack that was uh, put in the public domain last week, um, it has to be noted that the Council for Protection of Royal England um, cannot seem to find in consultation with the middle level commissioners or the local internal drainage board and it's also noted that the Cambridge County Council is the lead local flood authority um, have objected on the, the basis of um, insufficient provision made for drainage and flooding issues um, and they actually advise that the uh, local IDB be consulted. Whether that's happened in the sense of publication of the members' pack, I cannot say, um, but that is the, the, um, that is the information which I gleaned from it. So that brings to an end uh, the points which I wish to put to uh, the committee this afternoon on behalf of, of, of the, uh, my constituents. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor uh, Carney. Uh, members, questions, clarifications to Mr Carney, please. No, you got away with that lightly. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now I'd like to invite Kirsty Patterson, Lawrence Wheatman, and Katie Leach, objectors, to make their presentation to the committee. Um, so I've been. So I am going to allow, for the uh, record, six minutes between you all, and obviously, obviously, offer the same to the agent of the applicant. So you've got six minutes to make your presentation. Thank you. Hello, thank you for having us. So my name is Kirsty, um, and we're going to present some slides that we've prepared ahead of the meeting. You can see some photographs from uh, local amateur and professional photographers who enjoy spending time at the meadow. I'd like to draw your attention to the two trees that are photographed on the far right. One of the um, sites mentioned in the BCP is uh, to be called the Elms. These are the Elms. Uh, they're two leathery leaved elms, initially expected, uh, thought to be Huntingdon elms, um, but they have been identified as being exceptionally rare. The Wildlife Trust says that they could be the best specimens in the country, and um, the road that is going to access uh, this other parts of the site is going to be passing very close to these and could put those trees at risk from root cutting, even though the trees themselves are not going to be removed. Next slide, please. Um, so F FDC has a statutory duty to preserve and enhance biodiversity. The sites of county level importance for certain types of wildlife and district importance for others. LP7I, which um, says that BCP sites must protect on-site biodiversity, not off-site mitigations. The offsetting site is far away. It's only managed for five years, not the 30 years that's recommended. And no attempt has been made to relocate on a less harmful site, despite many being identified in the emerging plan. Um, and I can talk more about mitigation hierarchy if you're interested. Can I just interject there? Um, in the document that was submitted by the agent, which was a biodiversity enhancement and management plan, and the biodiversity net gain report that dated November 22, um, they described the grasslands represent a habitat of important value to the Fenland district due to its relative scarcity. And I think that's very important to note the importance it does have for this area. And it's those grasslands that are why it's called a meadow. Um, next slide, please. Um, biodiversity net gain is disputed between the Wildlife Officer and the Wildlife Trust. This hasn't been resolved. So the Wildlife Trust thinks there will be a 32% loss of on-site biodiversity units. 
um, and an overall uh, loss of 12.9% biodiversity units, even after offsetting, is really important. This hasn't been resolved because um, the Wildlife Trust are potentially, are potentially considering legal action over this. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is a statement from Martin Baker at the Wildlife Trust. Um, the Wildlife Officer has assumed that the Planning Officer would give equal weight to the Wildlife Trust uh, and their comments. We did contact the Wildlife Officer to say that we didn't believe that the Wildlife Trust's um, comments had been taken into account and we got a response from the Wildlife Officer saying that he thought that that was a fair assessment. Next slide please. Uh, photographed here is the manor house. Hopefully you will have seen the manor house during your site visit. Um, Wenny Meadow is actually formerly the landscaped manor park. Um, it's nearly 200 years old and it is due to be included on the local list. It would be very disappointing if we are to lose it before it has a chance for that local list to be published. Um, you can also see the medieval ridge and furrow which exists across the whole site and not just the archaeological protected area. Uh, next slide please. Um, for, uh, included here are some excerpts from um, historical maps from the 1840s to the 1940s. The shaded section of these maps, uh, the key for each of these maps, it shows this as enclosed parkland to confirm that Wenny Meadow has always been a manor park. Next slide, please. Um, on the delivery of the BCP, I think Councillor Gowler has covered this well, but I think that councillors need to be assured that the whole site will be delivered under LP7 of the local plan. Um, and the councillors should question whether that's likely, given that it's due to be removed from the settlement boundary. And approving just this site could result in quite an incongruous development on the edge of the town, which is just left isolated, surrounded by fields. Um, next slide, please. Uh, to reiterate and support Councillor Carney's comments, the uh, Section 106 contributions are completely insufficient compared to what the local service providers have said that they need. A breakdown for this is involved in the book, included in the booklets that you've received. Um, so the 106 does not sufficiently compensate for the impacts on existing services. Next slide, please. Um, the health impact assessment which this report relies upon, has lots of inaccuracies in it. It, say, it incorrectly says that Chatteris is due to get a new health centre as part of the Chatteris South development, which means that capacity at the healthcare centre, at the GP surgery won't be an issue. But that was actually removed from that development 18 months before this application was submitted. We highlighted this and the health impact assessment wasn't updated. Patients already struggle in comparison to the national averages um, to get uh, to get appointments at the George Clare surgery. And the health impact assessment incorrectly says that there are dentists locally accepting NHS patients. There are not. It's also important to know that Chatteris is already due to grow by 30% based upon the approved planning applications at large and medium sites. That's 1,400 homes or 3,500 people. A minute left. And the, thank you. And the cumulative impact of that 30% growth is not considered in this report at all, neither the officer report nor the health impact assessment. I would just add to that that when the site was allocated under the 2014 local plan, it didn't account for housing to the north side of Chatteris at Wound Farm. That has been a windfall. So we're actually having 249 houses developed that in 2014 weren't expected to be developed. We've met the housing numbers for Chatteris already without actually development of these 95 houses. Next slide, please. Uh, some numbers uh, relating to this particular application. Um, I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that we also have a 1,200 signature petition. Uh, the overlap on that is um, not complete. Less than half of the people who have objected, the 551 objectors, were even signatories. So this is in addition to those that had objected on the portal. Um, skipping, I think, to the next slide. <laughs> no, I think... Really, I'm being okay. I really think I've been generous. I don't think we can allow you any more time. Unfortunately, you had six minutes, and that's what we decided uh, I let you have uh, uh, before the meeting started. So, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, um, members, questions, clarifications, and if you, Councillor Bennett, and obviously just say who you'd like the questions, clarifications directed to. Yeah. Thank you. And that goes for all members. Thank you. Question to Lawrence. Um, if this gets turned down today, you've had years to come up with a scheme as to what's going to happen to it. Now, I attended the meeting when you went for your asset of community value and you stated there that you had no plans to do anything with it. You had no funding. Um, so what's going to happen to it? 
Yeah, I found the asset community value decision quite regrettable because the whole point of the asset community value regime is to give um, a six-month period for groups to come up with a proposal, not to expect, expect them to have a proposal in place before that application community value listing um, is, is uh, approved. Um, we have set up a group called Friends of Wenny Road Meadow, which would like to explore grant funding for purchasing a site for potential use as a country park. Um, there are lots of options, as the community ownership fund that the government is running post-COVID that we think would apply. But because of the option agreement that the landowners um, have with Canon Kirk, we've not been able to explore any of those options yet, um, because that prevents us from doing so, basically. Um, but those are the pros. Yeah. Did you want to carry on, Councillor Benny? Yeah, if I could. Um, I mean, you, you set a GoFundMe page for Chatteris Swimming Pool to save that, and that raised £2,000. Now, that was on um, that the cost of purchasing it was 300000 The cost of taking the roof off would probably be about the same in the removal of the asbestos in there. I mean, your campaign to, to raise that of £2,000 didn't scratch the surface. Uh, it's all very well having people sign petitions, but when it comes down to it, when people have to put their hand in the pocket and generate the money to pay for this, is this yet another pipe dream that you're coming up with that you're just going to raise funds because you've had years to set this up and I see no evidence that you've got any any um, plan to achieve this. Yeah, now, just to clarify, I, I had no involvement. Sorry, sorry, I haven't sorry. answered my question. So, you know, if you haven't got a plan to do with it, what would you do with it? Because you, by refusing this today, you could actually lose the benefits that you get by passing this application in terms of the green biodiversity space. Benefits. We're arguing on biodiversity. You're not going to lose the biodiversity benefits by it still being retained. That wasn't the question. Sorry. The question was, what are you going to do with it? Um, just, just a point of clarification there, though. Um, I had no involvement in that fundraising page for the Emperor's Swimming Pool that was set up by the Emperor's Swimming Pool Trust. Um, I wouldn't have advocated setting up a fundraising page before there was a concrete plan of action in place. I'd just like to remind you, we are discussing, members, yes. we are discussing the Welly Road site. So could we just yeah. put our minds towards that? But it, thank it, you. it is very much what, what happens to it. Yes. Okay, but that, no. we're going around in circles. Am so I, if you'd like to answer that or if somebody answer Councillor Benny's concerns, um, that'll be good. Then yeah, we'll move I mean, on we, somewhere else. We have a formal committee set up for which I am the secretary and we have looked at revenue streams and grant applications and we've also looked at groups that we could look at those in conjunction with. So we have support from the Wildlife Trust, we have support from... Fields and Trust. Trust, who've offered support. Uh, we've spoken to CPRE. Yeah, the Open Spaces Society. And the Open Spaces Society. So there are lots of groups who are supporting, but legally, you can't start raising funds for something when there's an active application. This is the decision point at which, from this point onwards, depending on your decision, that's when we can start. Legally, there is you, you, you cannot start raising funds for something when there hasn't already been a decision. So this is the point at which we decide whether or not we go forwards as a fundraising committee and we are absolutely ready to start doing that but we can't do it until you've made this decision because legally we wouldn't be able to because we can't guarantee whether we'd be able to spend those funds so your decision today decides whether or not we continue forwards with the fundraising plans that we have thank you very much okay council french and then councillor marks thank you um, thank you i mean you're, you're obviously aware that this is private land uh, depending obviously what happens today um, I'm quite sure the owners of this land are just not going to roll over and give it to you. Uh, so you will probably have to do a compulsory purchase on it. Where in earth do you think you would get the funds for that? Plus the fact with a CPO, you're talking about years down the line. By that time, uh, possibly the owners of it could fence the whole thing off and you've lost what you've already got. Have you considered that? Please answer if you can. Thank you. Yes, I mean, the, the the main reason for our rejection is the biodiversity loss rather than the public accessibility loss. So we would consider, even if the land was fenced off by the owners, that to be a win in terms of uh, on the biodiversity um, metrics. Because even if the land is fenced off, it's, it's still there, it's still biodiverse, it's still got the mature trees. Um, all of the revenue streams that I mentioned before would be where we would be looking for the money to be able to go forward with that purchase. Um, and we we have 
reached out to the owners to say that that's something which we would be considering afterwards. And we did so at the ACB hearing and had some positive conversations following that. Okay, thank you. Councillor Marks, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. I visited the site yesterday. Um, I have to say, I walked across a hayfield. My biggest concern there at the moment is, even if it is fenced off, that it's a fire risk to most people during some points. It could be ploughed up, it could have sugar beet in it, it could have whatever, then you've lost your, most of your biodiversity at that point. Following on from that, have you taken into consideration, obviously we are, we've read in the papers and we're getting close to a reservoir which is going to have X number of hundreds of acres literally across the road from there, which the biodiversity will move to. And I mean, I've seen it with mainly car park, we had a field, we had badges, we had this, we had that, and they've moved. Please, please, if you could. Okay, I would add the reservoir isn't scheduled to happen, is it, for another 20 years, I don't think, 25 years. So that is a long-term plan that is at the very early stages of its development. It is, but there's still land there that will, will in a period of time, come back in. With, it, with, your, with your area fenced off, if the area was fenced off, you would have lost that anyway. It's mutual, it's separate, isn't it, to the development proposals on the, the meadow land. This is a, a separate application, not interrelated with the proposed reservoir. I, I, I think um, people, members of the public, recognise that a fenced off area where the biodiversity is protected, that's a reversible change. So potentially further down the line, we could look at bringing it into community ownership. If it's built on, it's lost forever. Um, I think in terms of the biodiversity, it's very special. There's very, there's 11 priority species on UK priority list, um, and they are on 10 protected species of bats. The foraging sites, if you look at the maps in the ecology reports, are very focused just on this particular parcel of land, not even the wider BCP site. Um, and so I think the idea that wildlife would just relocate to another site if this was built upon is, is, is not, that's not what's going to happen. This wildlife would be lost completely. Um, you know, there are quite a lot of rare species and the CEO of the regional um, wildlife trust said that, and the tree officer in the report um, said that the wildlife that is um, these, you know, the trees on site and things sustain would not survive the breakup of the habitats on the site. Could I respond to, um, you made a point about uh, being able to plough it for sugar beets. I don't actually think that that's a possibility. I think you, because it's not archaeological protected site, yeah. and because it's never previously been ploughed since the medieval times, that you'd have to uh, apply for, for a license, for a license to do that. So you can't just go ahead and plough it for sugar beet. You could apply, yeah, but I, I think it's unlikely that that license would be granted given the archaeological merit of the land that's there, they would have the same argument over the biodiversity loss yeah, if they were well, to apply for that licence. Although the officer report says that there, are no, there was no objection from the, uh, sort of formal objection from the from Natural England, Natural England did say that they shared the concerns of the Wildlife Trust on this application and that they think that the site is very important and they highlighted that this kind of grassland is really, really rare in Finland. Um, well, it does just look like grasses, but the range of grasses there and the range of flora and, and fauna is actually quite special for Chatteras. It, it can be it all was, of those it things. Was, it was designed as a, as a landscape park, so this was like a um, Repton-esque kind of Jane Eyre, Mansfield Park kind of design to look naturalistic, um, to be attached to the Manor House that was quite in vogue in the 19th century. Um, and then uh, beyond, since in those 200 years since, it's obviously become, it's been left and it's become more and more wild over time. And the species um, richness there is much greater uh, than it ever was. And so over time, the reason we refer to it as a meadow is because of that mix of grasses. Um, it's, it's um, you know, the wildlife trust say in their report, that's a very rare example of Finland. Biodiversity enhancement. Yeah. It's tenanted. Yeah. So my understanding. Yeah. 
cutting, yeah. cutting is still good for the grassland species. In fact, yeah. the wildlife trust beneficial. said that they would like that to continue because actually the cutting, the regular cutting twice a year of the grass increases the biodiversity. So they recommended that if we were to continue that the correct husbandry for the site would be to continue with that tenant doing that biannual cutting because it enhances the biodiversity. And then what happens when we Well, it's been there for 200 years and it's not happened yet, so I think, you know... Um, I would just add, in the Biodiversity Enhancement Management Plan, which was submitted by the applicants, they refer to it as a grassland, so I think in biodiversity terms they're seeing it as a, a grassland, its value being a habitat of important value. Yeah. That's how they refer to it in biodiversity terms. I think it's whatever you want to call it. Okay, so, yeah, Councillor Hicks. Thank you. I'd just like to clarify, I read the uh, report here. Um, it said in there that there was eight species of birds on the red list and there was three protected species of reptile. What are those actual species? Because you could, in, all, in fact, tens of purposes, you could put anything in here. We need to know what species are at risk. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I can't remember the birds off the top of my head, um, but the... Uh, I recall that the um, reptiles were slow worm, common lizard, and... Uh, <sighs> These all came from the applicant's yes. um, own, own ecology, ecology survey for the BCP. So it was they were submitted during the BCP. Um, the, and then during the yeah. further reptile and bird surveys afterwards. That's, that's where we took the, those figures from. I may be able to get them before the end of the meeting if I have a few minutes. <laughs> okay, feel free to do that. Um, right, any more questions, clarifications before we let these kind people leave? No, thank you. We'll just let you get nicely seated. Um, now I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Hodson. Uh, to make his presentation to the committee. Um, I'm going to afford you the luxury of having an extra minute, so um, you have now six minutes, or if that's okay with you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak on this application. Um, clearly, it's had a lot of interest, and I've been coming to this planning committee for 20 years now, and probably this is one that's had the most interest in it. So I think it's quite important that I run through the key points from our point of view as the applicants. So everybody in the room, including um, officers and members, understand where we're coming from on this application. So first of all, this application was allocated in the local plan back in 2013. I sat in this very room and there were no objections to the inspector at that time. So it's endorsed by a planning inspector and it was then endorsed by this full council. It is effectively Fenland District Council's site. It is your site, it is in your, you allocated it, and it's in your housing figures. It's a really important part of your housing figures that you have um, for delivery. In the, uh, subsequently to that, it's then gone through a BCP process, which has also been before this committee for 325 houses. That was also endorsed by this committee, by the members. I appreciate some of the members have changed, but it, it, it's still been endorsed and approved for 325 houses. And my clients have made a decision to purchase this site on the back of those decisions that this council have made to allocate that site and put in a local plan. So we've invested the money on the basis that it's an allocated site. So that's the position we're in at the moment. From a, from a planning policy point of view, it meets all the requirements of the local plan. It's got an approved BCP and we have an officer recommendation for approval. From my point of view, it does not get any better than that. Okay. If we went to an appeal on that, it, if we are sat, put that in front of a barrister, for example, we look at over 95% chance of success at appeal. And I'm not just saying that because idly that is a fact in that respect. It doesn't, from a planning policy position we're not, we can't get any better position. So that's the planning policy side of things. Let's move on to the actual scheme itself. I've brought a lot of schemes in front of this council. This is a brilliant scheme when you look at it from terms of housing. Um, the layout of the scheme is only 90 units so it's relatively small but the amount of package of, of things that are coming along with this scheme uh, is quite high. Okay, so we've got no objections, really any statutory objections from highways, from 
drainage was mentioned, but all of those issues have been resolved. We don't have any objections from the archaeology team because we preserve that area. We have support from the wildlife trust officer. Um, yes, recognised there was objections from the sorry the wildlife trust. The wildlife officer supported um, the scheme. We've sought to go over and above what we need to do on biodiversity. Um, there is grassland on the site, which we can't move elsewhere on the site, so we've decided to move it over to some land we've got at um, Gore Road in March. I'm not sure the wildlife um, are too bothered where that grassland is located, but we're still retaining over 50% of that grassland on site. So we're only, it's only a 50% loss and, the other, and we're making up for that. And we're not under any obligation at the moment under biodiversity net gain to do that. Okay. In terms of the local plan, um, you have a policy which allows um, viability um, assessments to be done on sites. I've been in front of this council many times and there's been many schemes approved uh, at this council where no obligations have been provided at all. This, just because this site has got some objections to it doesn't make it any different. This site um, has had a full viability assessment and it's difficult for us on this one because we have to put in two points of access because we're opening up so our infrastructure costs are double to what a normal site would be. Um, we're eight hectares of land which we have to purchase. Only three hectares of that is developable. So five hectares is open space which we're providing and safeguarding for the people of um, Chatteris. I mean, five hectares, that's a 250% over provision of open space on this site. And the people of Chatteris want open space. I, what I can't understand is how they've gone along in major objection to something that they actually want because the landowners are not going to give this land over for free. Why would they? They're going to have to secure, if Chatteris Town Council or whoever wants to secure this, they're going to have to buy it themselves. And it could be fenced off and it could have no access at all. This scheme secures five hectares of managed open space. Okay. In terms of biodiversity, we've got a, uh, a very thorough environmental management plan. It secures um, um, offsets and for all of the trees, we're not losing a single major tree on the site. All of the species have been taken into account. The only thing we can't do is the grassland, which I mentioned earlier, which we're looking to relocate elsewhere. In terms of the ob going back to the obligations, we've um, got some 12% affordable housing. Most schemes I've dealt with in Finland don't come with any affordable housing. So this is a new, new thing. It's in excess of what we need to provide in terms of viability assessment. We've provided um, the offsite, um, obviously the offsite works, which we're doing at our cost. We're providing now financial contribution, which the council can um, use for whatever they want to use it for. Um, the latest viability assessment we had done on the site showed that really we shouldn't be providing anything with this scheme because of the costs involved in delivering it. So with with 80, 80, sorry, 90, 80 odd market units and um, a number of, I think we've got 11 affordable units now, we are producing a significant benefit. A significant benefit, five hectares of open space secured forever for Chatteris. Managed, we're, secure, we're protecting all of the wildlife on the site. Yes, we're offsetting, but we're doing that at our cost and just the grassland area. 30 seconds. Okay, so the benefits of this scheme significantly outweigh the harm. I'm not surprised the planning officers made a recommendation for approval because any planning officer looking at this or any professional planner would make the same judgment in my view. The benefits significantly outweigh the harm and we've gone over and above what we can do for viability on this site to make sure that it comes forward and we can produce the best scheme we can for Chatteris. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Hodson. If you'd just like to sit there, I'm sure members have got questions for you. Um, we'll take Councillor French, then Councillor Davis. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hodson. Hodson. Do you really believe that the proposed contribution of a mere £28,000, I've listened to what you've said about the, the parkland and the diversity, etc. But do you really think £28,000 is any benefit to the residents of March? You're not supplying anything to the National Health. They requested 50, over 55000 uh, Library is a mere 13000 You couldn't even afford to do that. Education, 360000 And it goes on. I was here in 2007, 8, 9, 10 and 12 when we did this. And it does say... 25%. Over the years, we have been very, very lenient and allowed that to be um, uh, discussed and dropped down for some, some people. But for you to offer £28,000 
and a near 12 per cent affordable housing. I've got lots of other things to say, but I'll, I'll bring up the debate. I really, the question is, do you really think you're better than the people of well, it's, And I'm it's, not interested in Gold Road. I know the Gold Road site. I, I think it's absolutely crazy um, that that is going to be moved when there's other sites in Chatteris that could be moved to. OK, well, in terms of your adopted local plan, you have a, a policy in there which allows for viability assessments on schemes. The reason that policy is there because it's very difficult to make schemes in Fenland viable because of the cost of the housing, uh, because of the value of the So that policy is there, it's an adopted policy, So, and it's it's nine times out of ten it's used by developers in this district when they come in front of this committee. And there's been numerous schemes approved across the district in that, in that which have been approved without any contributions to affordable housing or any con financial contributions at all. This scheme is opening up uh, this, is, this scheme is opening up the BCP area. We've got significantly higher costs. A third of the scheme is um, sterilised by the archaeology area. We've got to put the two points of access in, so our infrastructure costs are double. Um, so, only, so we've only got three, we've only, out of the eight hectares we're buying, only three is developable, and we've got double infrastructure costs. So it's no, it's no wonder that we haven't got the, uh, the finances to be able to provide all of the things that all of the contributions that have been asked for and what we've referenced there. But what we can do, and what Cannon Kirk have sought to do, is to try and get some affordable housing on the site. So we've committed to providing that, and we've, um, we've put in 12% there. And the 28,000, as I said, the latest viability assessment showed we shouldn't, shouldn't need to provide anything on this because of the viability, but we've, we've um, relented and gone back to the previous version. So at least there will be some funds that this council can use towards whatever they want to use it for in relation to this scheme. You want to come back, Councillor French? Or uh, you bring no, in Councillor I'll, Davis? I'll well, leave it to... OK, Councillor Davis then, thank you. Uh, mine's much the same point as um, Councillor French. I hear what you're saying about your giving over um, five acres, but there are comparable sites. There's the Bellway development in Wimblington, 88 houses, very similar size. They seem to be able to have managed to afford two archaeological digs. It's quite a lot of money. They have put um, EV charging points will be on every property. They still managed to give the full 25% and they've still managed to give £2,000 per property. So we've got Wimblington here, we've got Chatteris here, We've got the Elms here, and that is another one that gave the full affordable housing. So I'm just wondering why suddenly in this area it can't be achieved. Yep. Obviously, um, the costs on every site are different. And I've, as I've mentioned, uh, we're on an obligation to buy eight hectares of land. Um, most of those house builders, Bellway, they'll be building on probably 75-80% um, coverage of the site. We're, 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 build, we're building on three hectares and having to buy eight hectares to be able to deliver this. So we're having to put in, we're having to put in two road networks to open up the wider BCP area. And we've had significant archaeology ology works, the same as what they have. But that's the reasons. It, when you run it through the, the costs, you can't compare the costs of Chatteris on, the, on this site to the costs on other sites. It's just not, it's just not the same point. It's, it, you can, can you play um, <laughs> But if you look at the Bellway site, it's 88 houses. This one's 93. It's not a lot of difference. The money that they've had to pay out in putting on EV chargers, on doing quite, I mean, I, it's astronomic, the cost of actually doing archaeological digs, the way they had to do them. And that they are so comparable. It's, I know you say, well, it's a different, different site. But in that particular site, it is, you're talking near enough the same number of... Um, houses and you say well no we can't give you anything councillor <laughs> the bellway site though we're using probably 80 70 80 to 90 percent coverage of their site with built form which they get money returns from we can only get returns on three hectares of our site like, out of eight and we still have to buy it at the same rate there's no it's not comparable <laughs> we we're having to put in infrastructure to open up the site it, it just isn't the money there once you've done it to, to make it, it as you said from our viability assessment, it has already proved that when you put all of these costs have gone in and they're edited and they go through by independent audit, all the costs have gone in there. So it's, it's not really debatable. Those costs are in there. And without, without um, that viability assessment, this wouldn't come forward because we wouldn't be able to afford to do it.
Councillor Vanny. Thank you. A little bit disappointed you start off with threatening us with costs. Because when you start off and you say this will go to appeal rather than explain your situation first, I feel that that is in some ways a, a threat because councillors are always very wary of costs. But can I remind you that costs are a consideration and not material planning, not a material planning reason. Anyway, I'll come to my question. Just, I didn't mention costs in my... Uh, I, think, I, I didn't hear yeah. yeah. Sorry, I thought you said about going to appeal. I never mentioned costs. Going to appeal? It, it, I, I, mentioned, I mentioned the fact that if, if you went to appeal, that's what the planning inspector yeah, would... But that, but that, but that these are the points that the planning inspector would look at. Yeah, but that, but yeah, that, that's, that, that would be what would be the thing to assess cancer. But by the way, um, I'm very disappointed with the 12% that's been offered in terms of affordable housing. Um, the FDC site, which is also part of the, F of the uh, BCP, we put the 20% in and we are paying £2,000 a unit. This is in the emerging local plan. Now, that £2,000 isn't paid by you, that's paid by the people who buy it over 30 years to pay for their house. That's a cost that you pass on. It's like VAT, only the end user picks that bill up. So you say that you can't afford to pay this. Um, you've got higher costs, but you've also got a gift that keeps giving from that site. Because once you own the access to the other pieces of land, you will charge people, whoever takes that land forward, access over there. So that's a gift that keeps giving. So that infrastructure cost will come back. So I don't really agree that this £2,000 a unit that you don't pay anyway is an unreasonable ask. This is a, a fair site that we have here. Um, and in the emerging local plan, which as members we can give as much or as little weight to as we want to, I think £2,000 is very good. There was a house built in East Cams, which is halfway between Chatteris and uh, Meeple, and they have sill on top of S106 contributions there. And the sill contribution was £36,000, and that still gets built. Now, I know land values are different in different parts of the world and everything else, and the, 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 a lot of this S106 contribution uses land values in, in London, which is part of the, the formula for working this out. But I really feel that £2,000 a unit is not a big ask from the council. And I think that the 20% affordables would be a community benefit. Um, if you've done a deal to buy eight acres of land, uh, sorry, eight hectares of land, um, and you've agreed a price that is too high not to be able to contribute to the local um, economy, then you need to renew your sums. Uh, okay, before I come in, is there anybody else want to add to it? Sorry, can I just respond? Oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Chairman. Sorry. Yeah, just on the on the you mentioned the um, the the council site there. I don't think that site's been subject to a viability assessment. So when that gets subject to a viability assessment, it's very unlikely that you're going to be able to the developer whoever buys it's going to be able to probably afford that amount of contributions. So the the, the reason your adopted policy on viability is in there is to allow these schemes to come forward and schemes to get built. If the council are going to insist that we make contributions that we can't afford, these sites aren't going to come forward in this local plan or in your next local plan. That's why that policy is in the local plan and that's why housing schemes have come to this um, committee and have gone away with approvals with no contributions at all. We're not doing that. We're coming to you with 12% affordable housing and a financial contribution. Remember, this is only a relatively small scheme at um, 90 units. Um, we're, we're more than over providing in, in that respect, given the costs that we've got. Did you want to come back, Councillor Benny? No, so fine. any more questions for Mr. Hodson before I come in? Well, okay, I'm going to go to a very different tact, okay? I'm going to go in and say, if this gets, if this gets planning permission and gets built, I always, always, and I'm not making an exception of, of you, um, your firm, I am going to say, uh, have I got a cast iron guarantee from yourself that one, we need free commencement conditions and commencement, obviously, of buildings like that. We need a wheel wash facility and a sweeper on, on the site at all times. So that's basically what I'm looking for you for, just that cast iron. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, it's um, it's usually standard. If it's been omitted in any way, then I apologise for that because it's a standard procedure. Well, yeah. Councillor French and I know to our 
timely cost that these are not implemented. We've been around many sites, haven't we? And we've seen deposits of road debris on the road, uh, which we've tried to get cleared up and no one really wants to take responsibility. So I suppose in one respect, I'm glad that you've, uh, you, you, you've said that you would. So we're going to hold you to that if this site it, it gets built. So yeah. thank you for that. Happy to have that as a condition. Yeah. 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 Anybody else at all for Mr. Hodson at all before we let him go? No, thank you very much. Thank you. Now, quest members, questions, clarifications to officers, please. We've got Councillor Benny first, thank you. Yeah, question to officers. Um, it, it's been mentioned here today, and I've also read it on social media over time, that um, the land at Wenny could not be ploughed up straight away. What is the, is the legal situation on that in terms of the landowners, if they wanted to go in there tomorrow with a plough and plough it all up, can they or can they not? Um, I, I wouldn't be able to advise committee learnedly on matters that are not related to planning, but they wouldn't need a planning consent to, to, to plough up the field. That's all I can say, whether or, whether or not they need... Wise comment. Councillor Davis, thank you. Um, yeah, this site is um, obviously... Um, you're recommending it for um, approval and we're following the 2014 local plan but the same site doesn't appear in the emerging local plan and I, I would like to know what is the actual difference in, in simple terms why is it in one and not in one coming forward okay uh, well the first thing to note is that given the um, emerging local plan very little weight can be given to that because it's gone through its first round of consultation um, and obviously we will have received objections to the removal um, of the bcp site as a, a housing allocation um, so the, the starting point for all of this is the fact that you can give virtually no weight to the emerging local plan um, I might not be able to list all of the reasons why the site was um, deallocated from the plan, uh, but part of the reasoning why will have been due to the fact that um, since that local plan was adopted, there haven't been any progress on implementation of that BCP, notwithstanding the fact that the BCP had been um, adopted. Um, You'll note that in the emerging local plan, there are several BCP sites that have also been expunged from that um, um, from the list of allocated sites. Thank you, Chairman. Did you want to come back at all? No. 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 Thank you. Councillor French, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, with the, regard to the biodiversity and moving this from Chatteris to March, which is whatever you want to call it, as a crow calls, 10 or 11 miles. I've never heard that before. I've been here 24 years. Uh, obviously, it's um, it, it's a new thing. Um, to go back to Councillor Davis, I know exactly the reason. Um, a lot of the BCPs have been sitting there for 20-odd years and more, and you will notice that a lot of planning applications are actually coming in because if they don't get them in now, they've lost them and will lose them. Um, so that answers the, the question. I know Nick wouldn't put it that blunt, but I will. So if I can have an answer with the biodiversity moving it 10 miles away. Isn't there a site in Chatteris that that could be moved to? There must be land somewhere uh, uh, that would benefit you. the people. Yeah, through, through you, Chairman, as far as we're, we're aware that there wasn't a, a site that um, the applicant could reasonably acquire um, to do the biodiversity improvements that needed to doing. Obviously, there's that measure of convenience that they do own the land at Gorn Road already. Um, so clearly that was a driver, but um, we're not aware that there is any land that's readily available um, that they could have used more locally. 
if I may come back. So, do they have to do this biodiversity? Uh, th through you, Which Chairman. policy? Yeah, through, through you, Chairman. Um, as has been alluded to in the presentations by both the, the agent and the um, objectors, um, we have policies in the local plan that are there to um, protect and enhance biodiversity. That having been said, when development takes place, you are going to see, in most situations, biodiversity loss. And sometimes that can be compensated on the site, but it all depends on how biodiversity rich your, your site is that you're looking to develop and whether or not um, the biodiversity gains that you're providing on site are sufficient to do the offsetting. In this situation, um, whilst we don't have a sort of um, um, a glut of protected species type ecology on site, um, which you know, potentially is more of a, a line in the sand type situation, um, so, for example, if it was um, knee-deep in great crested newts, for example, then uh, whilst you are able to translocate things like that, that, it's more of a red line, but we're not quite in that situation on this site. Um, and hence, that's why, in terms of the off-site provision of uh, biodiversity, biodiversity net gain, um, has been uh, deemed appropriate because it is something that can be... Um, to reasonably uh, reprovided for elsewhere. As an authority, we do not have a, uh, a target that says, you know, it's got to be 1%, 2%, 10%. We don't have that in place. Thank you, Chairman. Would you like to come back, Councillor French? <coughs> no, you're finished, Councillor Mark. Thank you. Sorry, just following on from that, Nick. So what guarantee have we actually got if we move the biodiversity that in five years' time they won't come right along for planning on that piece of land as well? Is there any safeguards we've got in place? Or is it just, we, you know, hope that they don't? Uh, yes, that, that off-site location would have safeguarding around it. Um, in terms of the uh, management of the off-site area, you'll see from the documentation on, associated with the planning application, there's a management plan um, for the first five years, and then subsequent to that five years, there would be another uh, management plan produced, and that would, um, in terms of its content, that would reflect as to how successful the management, well, the establishment and subsequent management has been, and then what other actions are required in order to carry on delivering the games that are intended for that site. And the biodiversity area has to be uh, managed for 30 years, and that's provided for um, in the uh, management and maintenance document that's been submitted. Can I just come back on that? So, but if after five years it said it's not doing what it's supposed to do, at that point, can the developer come back and say, well, we, you know, we've tried, it's not doing, so therefore we want to build more houses on that piece of land? On the Gull Road or on, on the... the Gull Road, sorry. Uh, uh, they can ask, but they wouldn't get. <laughs> right. Because okay. you can't, you can't uh, prevent somebody from making a planning application. So it'd be wrong of me to say that they couldn't make an application because... In law, they could. Well, could, it, could it be provable? Is, is they proved? Is it, say the land was there. Uh, so, so okay. So I, I, I yeah. So committee. Yeah. So committee, should, yeah, so committee should, should not be factoring what I'm about to say in the determination of this application, because um, none of us are in control of what somebody might choose to do from an application point of view, and committee should not read into what I'm going to say is something that the applicant is considering. I am delivering a, a sort of a worst case scenario message is that, as I mentioned earlier, there's absolutely nothing to stop somebody applying to do whatever they want on any part of the land anywhere, broadly speaking, and it's up to us as the planning authority to 
decide whether or not that proposal is acceptable. So in theory, there's nothing to stop anybody from coming along with a planning application to redevelop the uh, offsetting location. And if that happens, then all things being equal, technically speaking, um, if that development proposal is going to be accepted by the authority, then the biodiversity net gain would have to leapfrog to yet another location so that there would be parity across the piece. Yeah, thank you for answering that. Um, <laughs> Councillor Davis, next, thank you. Can, can you just clarify, I'm sure I've read it in, in all of these reports, but it was like 120 odd pages to read and digest. But in 2024, the biodiversity levels change. So if this application, this application is goes through now, it goes through on a lesser. Um, and I'm just, if it's not in the local plan, then the emerging local plan, although you keep telling me to ignore it, but it, it's not there. And so there's good reason for people to try and get it through now because of biodiversity levels. Um, it's fine. So th through you, Chairman, um, you shouldn't be determining applications today on the basis that if you refuse an application today, you might get a better deal next week when the legislation changes. So you, you shouldn't be operating in that basis. Um, it, and if I can find my note, um, in terms of the biodiversity net gain, uh, where is it? Um, Yeah, so um, there's a loss of 9.14 units on site. There's an off-site gain of 11.89. Um, um, so there is going to be a, a net gain, which is going to be further enhanced by um, hedgerow biodiversity net gain units. And that's set out in your report. Um, I'll see if I can find the page number for you. Um, we can take other questions, we can come back to the answer on that. That's all right. You're happy to come back to that, Councillor Davis, are you? Uh, Councillor French, then, and we'll come back to Councillor Davis. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just to go back on Councillor uh, Mark's um, query with regard to that um, land at Gold Road. It is within my ward. I know Gold Road exceptionally well. And I have to say that um, Kevin Kirk are the only uh, developers that I've never had a complaint about the state of the roads. So that's to come back. Uh, but that land is in flood zone three, and it will never get, and it is high. So. I can't see it ever getting permission. They can try, but... Yes. Yes, a relevant comment, Councillor French. We're still waiting for the answers for to Councillor Davis's question. Has anybody else got any questions? Yep, Councillor French again, please. Um, drainage boards. Has Night Lures been consulted? <coughs> Have we had a response from Night Lures? Uh, if there's no reference to a response in the committee report, then we won't have received one, Chairman. Would there have been uh, one with regard to the BCP? Because obviously they were consulted in 2016-17. Through you, Chairman. The, the Primary consultee is the lead local flood authority, and uh, as you can see from the committee report, um, the lead local flood, the lead local flood authority, um, did originally raise objections, but subsequently those objections have been satisfied mm -hmm. and no longer objects. So, given that position, um, yeah, we we have to consider that the, the drainage strategy is is acceptable. Okay. 
Anybody else got any more questions while uh, <coughs> Councillor Hicks? Thank you. Uh, I'd like to put a uh, question to the planning officer at this point. Okay. Something which um, we, we actually stood on the road, and this is com something completely different now, um, regarding the cycleway which crosses the road and the uh, the access across the road. The, uh, what do they call that? The, um, the footpath, which is well, the yeah. thing that's going across the road. Anyway, um, the, crossing. Th yeah, the crossing, that's it. <laughs> uh, the crossing. Um, as far as I'm aware, there was supposed to be 45 metres of visible uh, access for the cars to see the crossing. Visibility. Visibility. Um, but when we got there and we stepped it out, I, where the actual crossing was supposed to be, um, I actually stepped it out. Now, bearing in mind that a stride is roughly a metre, give or take, um, by the time I got to 10 strides, we couldn't see the actual crossing. So is that an actual physical measurement? Is that a desktop survey? Um, I mean, is... Sorry. Uh, OK. Um, there's the slide up there um, for you to have a look at. Yeah. Um, and obviously, uh, the officers will answer your questions um, to put yes. your mind at rest. So, okay. so the slide's yes. there. We, we, stood, we stood on that actual spot there and we walked up the road and that is a blind corner. <laughs> and it, it, as you said, there was some shaving on the road that could take place, but even so, that is still going to be a blind corner. So that's technically wrong. So th this is the crossing improvement plan that's um, been actually worked up between the the applicant and the County Council Highways um, Department. Um, they've been working on this. There was earlier versions of it. Um, it also has a stage one safety audit, as I mentioned, I think, earlier in the presentation. But what you'll see is there's lines, and it, I, I appreciate this is black and white, so it's not very clear, but there is lines showing that pedestrians crossing can see in each direction for a distance of 43 meters. Um, I think maybe one thing when we were on site we didn't perhaps appreciate slightly is obviously not the, you know, the cars are traveling in different directions on different lanes on different sides of the road. So when you factor that in, that does help visibility plus what, the, what I mentioned yesterday too about the realignment of the road because it's being realigned as well. So it's going to be improved in that sense. Plus as part of the landscaping scheme, there's going to be some of the hedging removed to improve visibility as well. Um, on another thing, um, I know archaeology came up mentioned earlier, and I just wanted to make the point that the senior archaeologist at the county council also worked very closely with the landscape architect, who was you know submitted the proposal um, to ensure that as much of um, the non-designated um, archaeological significance was safeguarded within the site. Um, 2015 was um, there was an earthwork survey undertaken. Um, and it identified where the kind of possible important areas of archaeology were located. Um, and it came, and the result of that was there was an earthwork protection plan created. And it, it identified that the western section was the area where the important archaeology was. So you can see as part of the landscaping plan, I think we showed you a little earlier today, that that's the that's the, the segment of archaeology that is being protected. So I just wanted to clarify that. Plus on the, the question on definition of meadow, the MPPF obviously doesn't define meadow. It's an area of grassland. There's no designation or protection of this grassland in planning terms. Um, the applicant has followed the mitigation hierarchy of the MPPF. So this is what they were expected to do under planning policy. Um, they've tried to avoid any harm on site, they haven't been able to achieve the full biodiversity improvement as a result, but they're offsetting it. Um, and yeah, I just thought it was more like that. Okay. Through you, Chairman, um, page 94, Hara 10.114 sets out the uh, biodiversity situation. Um, I know that there's other groups, the Wildlife Trust, disagree. Um, but um, our position is, is that there's a lot of uh, 9.14 biodiversity units. Mm. Compensation enhancement at Gall Road will provide gain of 11.89 mm. combined on-site and 
off-site interventions will result in a 2.75 um, gain, um, representing a, a 5.8% gain overall. Uh, and in addition, there'll be a gain of uh, 7.59 hedgerow units, representing an overall gain of um, you know, 90%. <coughs> You're happy with that? Okay, well, we'll bring in Councillor Marks now. Thank you. Through you, Chairman, the reason why the visibility splay distance-wise is what it is, is because the worst case scenario is it's a 30 mile an hour road. You wouldn't design it as a 20 mile an hour because that 20 mile an hour only complies during school coming and going time. Yeah. Oh, is that okay? You're fine. So Councillor French, yes. Thank you. Um, thank you. Interesting. I attended a, a Transport and Highway meeting yesterday and we were discussing this very thing. And County Council are prepared. They have money. And any um, town or parish council who wants to go down the route of bringing and introducing 20 miles an hour, um, that can be brought forward. If you can throw some light on it, yeah. Councillor Benny, please do. Um, the 20 mile an hour for school time starts um, around the corner. As you come into Chatteris, it's on the left hand side, and it's before you get to that corner. Um, it's sort of run by cricketers. But the, that 20 mile an hour does come in before that. Just Councillor Marks is having a look at the. Thank you. <coughs> You're happy with it now? Okay. Just let Nick get seated and then we'll... Any more questions to officers at all? I think... We, no, we can't take any... Uh, no, 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 no. I'm afraid we can't allow that. Um, sorry about that, but um, protocol says not, so we're going to stick to absolutely that. Any more questions for officers? No? Okay. Thank you very much. So... Members, I'd now like to invite members to debate the item in respect of the material considerations relevant to the application. If you'd like to speak, please raise your hand. So we're in debate. Who would like to kick this off? Councillor Marks, thank you. So we had to go first. <laughs> Uh, okay, my, my concern with this is the biodiversity and moving it the 10 miles down the road. I, I've got a major concern having that, and I know we've heard that where it's going to is in flood risk three, so the likelihood is it will never get built on, but things do happen in the world and things do change. And we are going to be moving, you know, allegedly at least giving this land with what we had, what we saw yesterday, and I'm sure it won't be half as nice as what they are going to be developing on. So I have that concern. I also have a real concern on this road layout, even now. I, my, my concern when we stood there yesterday, the safety of not only children, adults as well, and that does concern me. So uh, I'm still very undecided on this application. Yeah. I'd like to concur. Sorry, yeah. you'd like to add to the debate? I'd like to just reiterate what, what Councillor Mark said there. OK, but we must bear in mind, although um, they're relevant points, what uh, Councillor Marks and, and you've said yourself, the, it's had been through a stage one audit from the, um, the Council's highways. Um, whether we think they're right or whether they're wrong, they're the expert in inverted commas. And I wouldn't like the council at this, this committee to go and 
use that as a refusal if that is the way they're going to go just on that thing entirely because that will open us up for uh, inspect the inspector and for an appeal so bear it in mind but please don't just go down that route thanks councillor marks i think i think chair somebody had to open the debate i think from the follow-on from that i'm sure we're about to hear about 106 money and an awful lot else yeah. just just to make uh, members aware Councillor Benny, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm harping on about this. This can be conditional anyway. It looks to me like they're building out from the inter internal of the corner. It looks like it's narrower than the main highway, which would increase the splay. So you probably could be achieved, but that, that could be conditioned. Um, I mean, looking at this application, all we've heard about today is biodiversity, and there is another side to this. We have got two supermarkets in Chatteris. We have got Aldi and we have got Tesco's, and Tesco's is not making money. You can see it by looking at the car park. And Tesco's came to Chatteris on the strength of housing growth here. And if we don't build more houses in Chatteris, we will lose the Tesco's. That is not going to stay there. They're closing the one in the middle of March. Tesco's, as much as people say they never close, they do. It isn't that particularly these 93 houses will make that much difference. It's the confidence it adds to the market or takes away from the market by refusing an application like this. Because if we refuse it, developers look at it and they'll think, no. There are plenty of other sites in Chatteris we could develop. We've got the Hallam land and the, the emerging local plan that's coming out. There are other sites that are new to the town. We can match our housing numbers without these 93. And I fully get that. But this is something that needs saying at the committee because it is a consideration you know there are more people use te tesco's in an hour than there are this field in a month and also if we don't pass this today or if it's not passed today if we pass it if this does not get passed there's nothing stopping the landowners going in there pulling every tree up there isn't protected by a tpo plowing it up spraying it off and growing sugar beet in it and that is a possibility so the, the space that we've got as green space as it's marked up today we're going to lose it this does protect half the site, the side on the left there will remain. But if this is turned down, we could lose all of it. It's a could. I'm not saying it should, but it is something that should be aired at this committee because that is a possibility. And you've got to weigh up the benefits. We've got the historical value here. You know, the historical part hasn't really been touched on, but I consider that to be quite a major part of this application, whether we're looking at it, we are building on historical land. The biodiversity. I personally don't like this trading land off between Chatteris and March. As a Chatteris councillor, I do not agree that you can just pick up an ecology or an ecosystem and move it nine miles up the road. That ain't going to work. All you're doing is balancing numbers out. And balancing numbers has no real practical reference on that. You can't take the ecosystem that is on there and just destroy it and expect it to pick up somewhere else on another piece of scrubland, which is where this is going. And what does Chatteris get out of this? Nothing. But my biggest concern is that we lose the whole site and we lose the green space which is being offered. This um, is before us today and if this, if, this gets turned, if this gets turned down, there is nothing stopping the landowners going in there, stripping everything out of that, ploughing up the bits. They may not plough it all up, but they can fence it off and everyone who walks their dog on there, which is where these complaints and the, the, the objections to the application have come from, um, will lose what they've got anyway. You won't have the houses built on it, but you'd lose that biodiversity anyway. It depends when that biodiversity report was done. If it was done when the grass is long, the um, species in there will be more than if the grass is short. And once that's sprayed off and the grass goes, which I can't see any reason why the Lando shouldn't do that, that biodiversity goes anyway. Would they do it? Would they not? Maybe they should have done it before they put the application in. But that's sort of to them. They, they know what they're doing. I do think the landowners have got a lot to answer on this they've been remiss they haven't spent a hundred quid on signs saying keep out they've allowed people to walk all over this land unhindered and they just expect that this will just sail through good councillors have been criticized ridiculed on social media through their lack of effort and their lack of money or lack of investment in looking after their asset um, and Truly, I want to see an answer on this today because this has been going on in Chatteris for far too long. 
and I don't consider that this is a, an application that is so one way that it's it's you know absolutely perfect it's everything else this sits on a knife edge this application could be voted either way we, we were more or less told this when we had the site visit from the officer you know this application could go either way based on the historical value of the of the site and also the biodiversity that could be turned down on that it could equally be passed and that safeguards the land that we stand a very strong risk of losing and it also damages the confidence that is given to house builders to make sure that supermarket stays in Chatteris. Because if we lose that supermarket as councillors, we are going to be ridiculed. And rightly so, rightly so. When Tesco shut the door down on that site down there, and they turn that into a potato store with an agricultural usage on it, and we get no council rates off it, um, that's probably one of the best council income streams that, that Tesco's have in, in Chatteris. So we then throw that away. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it is a possibility. And you can tell by looking at the cars in the car park, that Tesco's is not busy. And that came on the strength of housing growth. If we don't pass this, is there going to be enough housing growth going forward? I don't think we particularly need these 93 houses, but how much damage does that do to the confidence of developers? Fenland is a black spot all around. If you look at East Cams, you look at Hunts, you look at Lynx, South Lynx, there's house building going on all around us. There is not house building going on, with the exception of Wilsey, in Finland, the whole 2014 local plan that was delivering housing numbers, which councils have a responsibility and a legal obligation to provide homes for people, was based on BCPs, and they haven't worked, with the exception of Woodlesey. So, you know, how much is it that, and, and when you talk to developers through FDC, there is a, um, a definite feel that developers don't have the confidence to come to Finland, and the, and the land values are low, and they, they, there isn't the margin that they can make. And therefore, we don't get any housing. And as much as people don't want this, those people who are complaining about the fact that they want this saved will equally come to us in 10 years' time and say, where's my council house for my daughter? Where's the council house for my granddaughter? And we do need housing. But equally, I see this today, and I, I, I look at it as a chatteress person. I don't agree with this swapping this, this piece of land. I don't think you can swap it. You can't move an ecosystem from one place to another. And it does have historical value on it. But all of the points I've made need to be made. All we talked about is biodiversity. And there are bigger pictures here going on. And there are, in my opinion, equally, equally maybe more important to the general populace of Chatteris. There's, there's more people use Audi in an hour than use this field in a month. And if we lose a supermarket, all those people will then be saying, councillors should have done more. We will be on social media being criticised for failing to do our job. So it is a tough one. Actually, of all the applications I've sat, and I sat this morning, in fact, I've read this for over a week, and I'll read it and I think, oh, yeah. Then I'll read it again and I'll think, no. And then I'll read it again. And it is. And to me today, the fact that the 106 contributions are poor, and the fact that the affordable housing in this is not to a standard that I consider to a standard I would like to see it doesn't encourage me to, to support the application. But I really would like to know what other members think. I'm sitting here today and I, I, I dare say other members are in the same position because we all do this every four weeks and we all know where it sits. We read these reports and we look at it. Some things are very clear cut and this one's not. I could go either way on this one. I still, don't, I still don't know which way I'd vote on this. I'm not happy with what I've heard in terms of the S106 contributions, and I'm certainly not happy with the affordable housing that's coming out of this. Um, but equally, there are bigger things at play here than just saving a field, which is what we're looking at. And the confidence this brings to the market, not just in Chatteris, but through the whole of Finland, because we have not got house building, but we need houses. Because where do your children and grandchildren live if we don't build them? Okay, we'll bring Councillor French in. Um, thank you. Um, I agree with quite a lot of what um, Councillor Benny has, has said. Um, yeah, it's a possibility if this isn't approved, it's going to be a bit of land stuff there. They're going to get absolutely nothing. Uh, I mean, working out, I wasn't pleased, I said right in the beginning, I wasn't pleased to the agent with the lack of Section 106. But he did explain they have to buy eight hectares and they're actually giving five hectares back. That is a lot of land. 
Um, going back to what Councillor Benny said about Tesco's, yeah, we've got Tesco's and it was built because they were expecting um, uh, growth within Jatters. They've just lost pound stretcher. Pound stretcher's coming to March. But we're losing our Tesco's in Broad Street. Uh, so, you know, we, we do need this. There are people desperate for homes, as Councillor Benny said, you know, years to come, grandchildren, kids, etc., etc. They want a home. I'm not happy with biodiversity. I've never heard of it before. Um, I'm sure that there's a bit of land somewhere that um, could be utilised. But I think we have to look at the bigger picture. What, and we haven't got a crystal ball, this bit of land could be, um, as Ian said, ploughed up, left over, and um, uh, the people who use it now get nothing. I went down, I could, couldn't go yesterday, as I was a county. I went down Sunday. Um, there was a couple of dog walkers there. Uh, but what I did encounter, two or three loads of dog pile. Um, which wasn't pleasant, you know, for people to, to use that. Um, so it's it happens everywhere. People do not pick up the dog poo. Um, so on, on balance, this this is going to be on balance, and I'm heading one way or the other at the moment. Okay, uh, Councillor Davies next, thank you. Um, I think all of us actually have teetered one way or another with this application. It's probably one of the hardest applications that we've had to, to look at. Uh, not very happy, obviously, I said before, with, with um, um, 106 contributions. I'm not happy about people think they can pick up stuff and move it miles away from its natural habitat and think it's just going to, you know, brush itself off and get on with life. It, it's, it, it's not never going to work like that. Standing in the, um, standing there yesterday and looking around, you think, God, really, this shouldn't be built on. It should be just left. And then you, t you stand back and you think, but actually, if the application isn't approved, who's going to look after it? Because the landowner won't. He he'll, just, he'll just, well, you know, if I can't build on it, then that's that. This way, at least, we get Something. a parkland that's safe, that's, that's going to be looked after. It's not wild. Um, so... <laughs> There is a gain, a big gain, and we talk about jobs in Tesco's and uh, um, also stainless metal craft. They can't recruit people because people want to live near mm. to where they work. So uh, there's all sorts of reasons. The heart wants to go one way and the head is wanting to go somewhere else. Thank you. Yeah, Councillor Marks. We've heard Councillor Benny and what Councillor Benny thinks, and yeah, most of that I agree with. My real con concern with this also is 106 money. We are going to bring 90, 90 or 93, whichever way you look at these properties, that's 93 more families into the area. We already know that people, that the, the things are stretched like doctors and amenities and 28,000 pounds, I know what the agent said, we shouldn't, do, you know, we could, we could get away with paying nothing. Okay, but equally, I think they are coming to Chatteris. They need to give Chatteris something more than £28,000. At the end of the day, I think it's a bit of an insult, personally. They are going to be taking land from Chatteris, be it good land, bad land or whatever, they are going to build. And what they'll do, whatever figure they come up with, is put it on the price of the house. So whatever the price of the house is, they can inflate that by... A thousand, two thousand, whatever. The 106 money is pitiful, to put it politely, and we shouldn't be sitting here. That should not even have been brought into this today. Biodiversity, yeah, I don't agree that we can move stuff 10, 10 miles down the road. What are we going to do? Are we going to actually carry it and put it there? You know, I, I think it's a bit of a, to be fair, I think that's a bit of a red herring to what we are, where we are now. I, there are concerns, but as, as everybody is quite rightly saying, I'm the same. I just It's just such a 50-50. It's a pity the agent wouldn't come back, having spoken to the, his client, to see if there was some more 106 money. Maybe that would make my decision a bit easier. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to come in there, I think. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll I, I reiterate what Councillor Mark said, really. I'm very disappointed with 12% and 300-odd pounds or 200 and whatever it is. Um, contributions per house. I think I would be more happier to make a decision 
if we were to get even a thousand pounds a house and quite a lot more money in obviously uh, contributions that we could put which everybody says in in the in the press and they say on on facebook that we can't get a doctors or anything like that i think if we'd have had 80 90 100 thousand pounds plus 15 or 16 percent affordable houses i think it make it more palatable to uh, approve this but um the agent has said he can't do it so we are where we are so again like everybody else i'm sitting on the fence for this one and um, we've soon got to make a decision though uh, members but um i'm happy to listen to anybody else who wants to come in thank you sorry i'll just counsel counsel mark sorry i think just the follow-on from that as well chatris is a growing area there are two or three larger businesses moved in recently to Chatris. They are struggling to get staff for the simple reason is there isn't the housing. People won't travel from Peterborough. People won't travel from Cambridge. In you know, it is a struggle to get staff. We need good housing, and you know this this is actually half a solution. But again, if the developer's worried that he won't be able to sell the houses, I'm sure that's not the case. I think, you know, this is something that could happen, but we need to have the trade-off with the extra money. Councillor Benny, thanks. Yeah. Put aside the Tesco bit and put aside the money and the housing needs and everything else. My biggest concern is that we're going to lose what we've got. Because, I mean, Mr. Wheatman's run a campaign that at times has been a little bit harsh maybe being kind there um, but he hasn't got a record of delivering swimming pool isn't a good example of that and this application be it this uh, 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 no we're only, we've got one meeting and we're going to stick to protocol uh, sorry uh, this application no, thank you council bank carry on please yeah. Thank you. Please don't make yeah. it a personal no, no, it's not. Um, attack on but, but, any... But this, this, this is very important because what happens to this site? What happens to this site if we turn this down and they play it up? Yeah. We then have nothing. We've lost, we've lost the 106 contributions as measly as they may be. We've lost the social housing as measly as it might be. But we also lose the very piece of ground that I want to see saved. Because if they play it up and they're within their right to do so, and let's face it, if they go in there and do it, they might be fined. I mean, we're speculating here, I know. But then Chatteris loses the whole lot. We end up with nothing. And if we end up with, with the worst of the worst, we don't get any housing, and we, which damages business, which is, is, is in Finland. But we also lose the green space that is already there because it's not a given that everybody can walk on this. It's private land. They can keep you off it. They could fence it off. As much as people break the fence down, this actually opens up green space, which will be public open green space. It's not as big. It's not. It's not the the, the full site as it is now, but it is half of it. And therefore, we could lose and lose. And this is the dilemma that we this committee is facing today. And you know, I would like to think that there was some something that could be done that we'd have a plan of what would happen to this if this gets turned down today. Because truthfully, I, I see we could end up in a lose-lose situation here. And what does Chatteris get out of that? Gets no money, gets no housing, and it loses the very thing it's got. That is the dilemma we have. No, that's not. No, that's not necessary at all. Um, we'll just we'll just renew on that one. Um, right. Um, you want to come in, Nick? Yeah. And then I'm going to ask a plea. Then. Yeah, if I may. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, just as I'll pick up on a, um, a a few things. In terms of viability, um, as was referred to by the case officer, uh, the viability report has been through a vetting process, not only through. Uh, our own uh, viability uh, officer, but also the county council's um, officer as well, I believe. And you know, in terms of its technical content, we've got no quibbles with it. It is what it is. Uh, and as I think has sort of 
cropped up during the sort of debate and in the questioning, um, and also the agent's presentation, we're in a situation whereby, where we've had development proposals um, that are um, proposing zero affordable housing, zero contributions, or very low levels of contribution, um, and the evidence supports the reasons why, um, we have admittedly, begrudgingly accepted that and, and, and granted planning consent. And in that regard, this development proposal is no different. So we wouldn't really have a strong ground for refusing planning permission on the basis of the lack of Section 106 contributions in affordable housing. Turning now to biodiversity net gain, um, again, we've got to remember that we don't have a percentage net gain target in any planning policy. So, you know, we, we can't aim for the stars in that respect. And we've got the, whilst there is a disagreement between the Wildlife Trust and the Wildlife Officer about the, um, uh, the scoring of the site as it exists at the moment, um, at the end of the day, our advisor is, is satisfied with the calculation and is satisfied that the hierarchy has been followed um, and of the mitigation management proposal for the off-site uh, scheme at, at Gall Road. So again, when it comes to a reason for refusal, you know, we've got to think about where might we get our evidence to support a, a reason for refusal. And then uh, just to pick up on the point made by Councillor Benny on um, biodiversity, you know, what happens to the site if plan permission isn't granted? And that, you know, as yeah. Councillor Benny has quite correctly um, identified, who knows? It is the answer, uh, and he's outlined a number of possible scenarios. But just to um, bring us back to the pure issue of biodiversity on that site, the way that the biodiversity system um, works, I don't mean biologically, I mean for the purposes of calculations, um, if somebody, and I'm not saying that the owner would do this, if a, uh, a landowner clear fells and destroys absolutely everything on a site, then when it comes to the BNG calculation, that works retrospectively as to what the site was like several years back. Um, so there's no benefit in any destruction taking place on the site because they would still get caught um, by the calculation methodology that has to be employed. Um, I think the key takeaway from Councillor Benny, if I may be so bold, is that the benefit of granting planning permission, if you see it that way, would be that you've got a site that currently doesn't have any official public access to it, and if planning permission is approved, you would get access to it. So I think that's the, the nugget there, so to speak. Right. Um, before I bring in Councillor French, <coughs> I'm going I'm to do something a little bit different. I'm known for being a bit different. Um, I'm going to ask the developer now, or the agent, if you're prepared, because it is a bone of contention, this 106, just a simple answer, can you improve on the amount of monies from the 28,000 up quite a lot, and also the affordable housing up from 12% to 16 to 17%? Would that be an easy, would that, because that is a bone of contention with me, it is with, um, we can't give them 15 minutes now because it was just a quick, just a yes or no, basically. Um, excuse me, we, we do have the right under property and planning. Yeah, we can we do. do. Yeah. Can you suspend the meeting for 15 minutes, please? Yeah. Uh, presently, I think Councillor French is right, it's in the past review, so we're quite able to do that. So I think we will. I think we'll recess for for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, we'll obviously go into another room um, and we'll, if that's, a, if that's okay, with the case officer. Never been done before, but no one's flying around the world once, was it? Uh, Mr Chairman, th is th the th plan th that the agent speaks to the officers? Not, not to... Yeah, that's fine. That's, that's fine. Absolutely. If the agent's happy to do that, speak with the officers. Yes? 
Okay, well, well, we'll do that then. So if the officers would like to go to another room, possibly to, for a member's room or any room that's free, we'll have a recess until the time they come back, because it is a bone of contention, and it does, as Councillor Benini and um, other people here say, it's been going on long enough, we need to make a decision today, and we need to make a decision for the people of Chatteris, for the best deal for the people of Chatteris. That's what I'm worried about, getting something back for the people of Chatteris. Monies that can go towards the George Clare surgery, which uh, uh, people are saying can't get a, uh, an appointment, uh, and things like that. So that's where I'm seeing. So please, um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, 10 minutes I'm gonna give you in case it, negotiations are a bit tougher. Thank you.
Uh, thank you, uh, members, uh, for coming back uh, quickly. I'm going to do something really unprecedented, um, certainly since I've been on, uh, on the Planning Committee and Chairman for four years. I'm going to ask Kirsty Patterson to make a further two minutes presentation, or whatever she wants to do, but to reiterate, only two minutes, and there'll be no questions to officers or to members. It's just a statement uh, to the committee. Thank you. And Elaine, of course, will tell you when your two minutes are finished. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to start by addressing a question from Councillor Hicks that I was unable to answer earlier. Uh, you asked about red list and amber list species of birds, which on the site are barn owl, house sparrow, songfish, starling, yellowhammer, bullfinch, dunnock, and linnet, all of which are breeding on the site. You also asked about um, reptiles, of which they are common lizard, slow worm, and grass snake, which make it a site of principal importance. There are also 10 species of bats, all of which are protected. Um, I mention, mention those because offsetting, which we've talked a lot about, is not intended to be used for sites of principal importance and it's not intended to be used with protected species. All of those which I've listed are make this a site of principal importance and are protected species. Um, I'd like to also address the fact that there is not a difference in opinion between the Wildlife Officer from the Council and the Wildlife Trust. The difference of opinion is between the applicant's own ecologist and the Wildlife Trust. And the Wildlife Officer specifically did not recommend either of those, which was correct. They expected that decision to be made by you during this meeting. He wasn't coming down on either side about which was the correct numbers. Uh, no weight has been given to the community's objections, um, either through the poll or through the 551 during the debate. I didn't hear that mentioned. And I'd also come back on the, tes the Tesco. We've already got 1,400 houses approved, and there are several new sites in the emerging local plan. So the 93 houses are really quite insignificant when you think about the Tesco development or whether or not they're going to stay compared to the 1,400 already approved. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for keeping it very brief. So now I'm going to invite Nick, uh, Head of Planning at Finland, to see what Dealey could or couldn't come up with. So we're all in trepidation waiting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, the uh, contact has been made with the, the applicant and the offer stands at 12% affordable housing. And no increase there. Uh, but in terms of the cash contribution, um, that's proposed to increase to £1,000 per plot and that would be applicable to the market dwellings only. So that would be to 82 dwellings. Okay. Well, thanks for that. Um, very useful. But, we, but I'm just going to remind everybody, we haven't finished the debate, so I'm going to introduce or reintroduce the debate. Councillor French. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I did want to come back um, with regard to the highway. Um, as you know, I sit on my Smart Area Transport um, Study, and I can assure you the highway safety officers take this extremely serious. If they're saying it's going to work, it will work. Um, the other thing, uh, you know, see, we're, we're all in balance, we're not quite sure how we're going to go. Um, but as material considerations, we would find it very, very hard to refuse this application on material considerations because that's what it's all about. But having heard what Nick said, I have to say that is a great improvement and it certainly will go whether it goes to, and my preference as you always know, uh, would go towards the national health because it is for doctors, etc, etc. We did that in April, uh, we took money away from education and gave it to national health and that is this committee's right to do so. Quite right for Cancer French. And I think if, if, if this application is successful and, and it's far from being uh, determined yet, I would think it should go to the, the Chatteris Clare surgery for the benefit of the people of Chatteris. So thank you, Councillor French. Anyone would like to add to this debate? <laughs> no, I'll, I'll take you first. I'll take you first, Councillor so Mark. Oh, did you want no. French to say? So. Sorry? Uh, after you, Councillor. Yeah, I'll, it's first for you, Councillor Mark. I've just heard the two-minute speech. One question I don't know if anybody can help me with. Um, we referred back to what they they basically had, a survey, whatever you want to call it. How many people actually voted in that? A thousand. And how many people are there 
in Chatteris? Twelve and a half. So less than ten percent actually vote, voted. So, so, so we, so it wasn't a sort of like majority by any means. It was quite a small turnout. Okay, thank you. Right, Nick, and then we, we must move on. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman. Um, well, on that on that point, um, it's important to for members to note that planning applications. Uh, should not be determined on the basis of the number of people who voted mm. for or against it. It's about the planning points that are raised by those representations mm. and the material planning considerations um, that relate to that development proposal. So that's um, that point covered. On the issue of the 106 and what the, the £82,000 um, could be spent on, um, Two things. One, I would countenance against ring fencing it purely for the NHS. Um, I would um, suggest that priority is given to the NHS. However, if a project is not forthcoming in a timely way, then that money um, could be spent on one or more other projects associated with any of the other asks that have been identified in your committee report, such as the County Council Education and Libraries, um, so that we're not in a position whereby we are returning the money to the applicant because the NHS hasn't come forward with the project. Uh, also, I would throw in there that uh, potentially any unspent money could go towards the provision of affordable housing anywhere in the district and I say anywhere in the district because affordable housing schemes um, don't pop up that often and can be anywhere in the district and, and therefore that gives us that flexibility and finally I would very much countenance against identifying a particular surgery where the money will be spent because of the way that uh, GP surgeries are arranged and funded, because basically it's a contract and you never know in two years' time that surgery might have closed down and been replaced by a and other, um, and you won't be able to spend the money because that surgery that you've identified in 106 doesn't exist anymore. So there needs to be that flexibility, Chairman. Yeah, okay, I think I disagree with a couple of those points. Gonna, before I do, I'm going to disagree with several of those points. Before I do, I'm going to bring in Councillor Benny. Thank you, um, I mean, if there is any 106 money going here, I would like 20% of it to go to the George Clare surgery. Partly because Chatteris Town Council, 18 months ago, had a meeting with the uh, practice uh, manager and the senior doctors there. And they are trying to... They, they want to turn some of the meeting rooms into surgeries because they know Chatteris is growing. And this money, to me, should go to the George Clare surgery because they, are, they have to pay for this out of practice money. They have to raise this money to pay for it. Um, and this money goes directly back to Chatteris. Um, as much as you say the practice could be out of uh, business and, and against ring fencing it, um, I had a chat with Dr. Angela Stevens King over the last few months. She was looking after my dad when he was dying, and I did mention this. And they are looking to do these changes to the surgery. And although they have money, I remember I went to see Dr. Dara several years ago, and he was writing me a prescription for Calpol, and I said to him, I'll buy it. And he said, no, I don't do that. He picked a pile of prescriptions up, and he went, there's 30,000 pounds worth of drugs on there. But that money doesn't pay. That pays for drugs. It doesn't pay for the infrastructure that we need to improve that surgery in Chatteris. And I do think that giving this money to the surgery to enable them to do the changes that they need to, to get more GPs in, which at the time when we had this meeting with the uh, practice manager and the, and the GPs there, we said to them, you know, what would you do if every house in Chatteris was built? And they said, how many is that? And I think we said three, three and a half thousand. I can't remember the figures. Um, and they just said, some of the three and a half GPs, we'd have to find them from somewhere but we, we need the extra rooms and they are looking to extend that surgery that they to convert the meeting rooms into surgeries. And if the Chatteris grows at a faster rate, then there is room for them to build there. 
but that is where that money should go. That puts that directly back to Chatteris. I'm sorry, I disagree with you there, Nick, but I know there is a need for that, and I know they are looking for funding for that in the local surgery. Uh, actually, I'm going to come in here. Actually, I agree with Councillor Benny on this one. Uh, it's it's a Chatteris application, and if there is a benefit to be added out of this, where there will be, there'll be ninety three thousand pounds, a thousand pounds to dwell in. Um, oh, no, it'll be eighty two thousand. Sorry, but that will go some way. Uh, a long way of, uh, of doing the rooms. I just absolutely think it's imperative that we give chat chatters back something for an application like this. Um, so, and we can, we should ring fence it. Um, if if we re if they rename it or they move chatters surgery, as long as it's to do with chatters, that's absolutely fine because it will benefit chatters people, won't it? So I think we could do that. Um, so I'm all for that, um, but I'm going to listen to what anybody else says, Councillor Mark, you know, so, sorry, I haven't missed you this time, Councillor Marks. Thank you. Obviously, I'm Councillor for Chatteris and Mamie, so I've got to be a little careful what I say, but actually, I think all of this money should be retained for Chatteris. It's Chatteris that's in one way going to lose by having this. The money is going into Chatteris, but it should gain in other ways. And if it goes to the library, if it goes to affordable homes, and I'd love to see it go to affordable homes, because I think that's another thing that all areas need, but this this money should come back into Chatteris and, and, and not be diluted throughout the rest of FDC. So that, that would be my personal feeling on that. Uh, yeah, apologies. I, I perhaps wasn't as clear as I should have been. In terms of... Um, spending the Section 106 money on whatever it is going to be spent on, um, that would all be within Chatteris, save for the affordable housing. Um, so that, that was what my proposal was, and apologies for that not being clear. Um, and in terms of specifically the, the health um, section 106 contribution um, rather than name a particular surgery if the 106 says that the money is to be spent on the delivery of health facility improvements within Chatteris Town Council's administrative area then um, I'm not sure if that is sufficiently acceptable to you or, or not. Okay, uh, Councillor Fenton has got some idea I should think. <clears throat> Thank you. As I say, I, I welcome this uh, additional contribution. Uh, it is going to be a growing town. Uh, it is a small amount of money, thirteen or thirteen and a half thousand pound. I would like thirteen and a half thousand pound to go to the library, because people will be using that library, and it will obviously need um, possibly new new bits and pieces. Well, yeah, we haven't come to a conclusion really, have we, on whether this is going to be uh, this is going to be refused or not? As a we? suggestion. So, council, yeah, okay. So, Councillor Benny, and then we've got to sort of soon wrap this up. This will be tea time, I think. Yeah. I mean, the other project is the King Edward Centre. We need a... We want to extend the King Edward Centre because of child provision. We need for childcare. Um, and that is another project that the council, town council is looking to do to bring benefit to the town. Um, I would like to see some of that money go back to that because that is giving back to the community, which is what 106 agreements are about. And it is about putting money back into the community. Um, I mean, would it be possible to put that money um, into Chatteris Town Council's 106 pot? And then the Town Council sorts out where that money goes, because that would then be very, very carefully spent within Chatteris. Okay. And that, that would be controlled. I'm, I'm sure Nick's got some idea on that one. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. Um, my concern is is that um, when Section 106 money is being requested, there has to be an evidence base to say that um, without the contribution being made, the proposal would be unacceptable. We've liaised with the County Council and they've provided a, a response in terms of um, uh, early years, primary and secondary, and you know, hand on heart, I'm not sure whether or not the early years conversation from the County Council 
takes into account or not the establishment that uh, Councillor Benny is referring to. Uh, and, and therefore my worry is, is that you yeah, potentially um, making provision for that specific facility wouldn't be um, in compliance with the regulations that we need to follow around Section 106 contributions. Um, and, and therefore, um, I think the way round that is, is to say um, X percentage of the total sum or uh, of the £82,000 or putting a number on it um, would be made available for early years provision in the town of Chatteris. And then, you know, that potentially could go to the relevant project that comes forward and it would be have, you know, have to be demonstrated that it's in compliance with um, you know, the civil regulation subsequently because we have had an ask from the county council we are get, we are getting a little bogged down on this but i'm going to yeah. council Franks and council benny then we've got to make a decision here yeah uh, thank you chairman um yeah i, I totally agree uh, we haven't made a decision um and i think we, to, we need to make a decision absolutely and then a discussion um which could be under conditions which then depends on what the decision is, and then the officers can c come back. Right, Councillor Benny, you're the last one, and then I'm not going to take any more. Okay, Nick, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm having a bad day. I'm not sure I completely follow what, what Councillor French is, is proposing. You have to make a decision first. Um, I, think, I think it's got, my view is there has to be a whole decision, so you have to say, um, refuse or approve and if you're approving you have to set out what you're going to that do is what we're in saying. terms of the section that's, that's, what, I'm, that's, that's, that's what, what I'm saying that's exactly what we're saying so look, you're not really having a bad day <laughs> just, sorry I'm really just as not as good as you could, <laughs> chairman we don't yeah. want to be in a position whereby no. you vote on a on a proposal to grant planning permission all the hands go up because that would be your resolution that's done no 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 well, we need a condition it. as well yeah so Okay, I'm just going to take what Councillor Benny says. I'm going to close this then. Right. What I want to see is this money go back to Chantress. Yeah. <laughs> um, if we get any, we might not get a vote that way. Well, um, but I want to see this money come back to Chantress. Can that be discussed afterwards? Uh, but to accept that that money goes back to Chantress. And we discuss that and we look at it where and what percentages of that money is used in Chantress and where that money is. Can that be agreed after? But we accept that that money goes to Chatteris. Yeah. We accept we accept the eighty two thousand pounds to go into into Chatteris. But what Ian's saying, can we to move on? Can we do it later on, or with uh, with member de member involvement? So, I'll, I'll, I'll go in, uh, yeah. uh, 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 and obviously, um, so if you can chip in, um, if um, I, I go off piece. Um, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, technically, you could put a proposal forward that says refuse the application and give the reasons why. Yep. And you know, if it comes to pass that that was unsuccessful, we would be asking for a new um, proposal to be put forward to be voted on. That new proposal must, if it's going to be for approval of the development, you need to identify if you're wanting any particular measures to be put in place in respect of the content of the 106. So I think that that's something that you need to debate now. Okay, that's right. But that wouldn't, right. you know, your debate on the content of the 106 would not prejudice your ability to refuse the application. Okay, so let's move on. So now, yeah, who wants Chairman, what? I think we have already debated the section 106. We have. We what just we, have they to want, what, they want to, what they want to do, Councillor French, is say, uh, we'll give £60,000 to the uh, surgery, £13,000 for the library. I think you're looking to identify, aren't you? Uh, yes, Chairman. Yes. So my, my, my proposal uh, or, or my suggestion is, is such that um, the 106 monies have to be spent within the um, Town Council's administrative area, for one. Um, Two, the money is split however you want it to be split against various 
activities, so you could say health and early years, uh, but you don't specifically identify um, a facility where it's going to be spent because otherwise okay. you will potentially run into trouble in if those facilities don't come forward with a proposal you want to have that ability to spend it elsewhere and then the final component would be <clears throat> if any monies are not spent in any of the categories or, or a particular category that you'd ring fence say for example no proposal came forward for health within um, seven years then that money could be spent on any of the items That's that good. have been listed in the 106. So it could go on health, uh, it could go on early years, it could go on libraries, so forth. Oh, I actually think that's an excellent idea. Um, <coughs> yeah, if you want, do you want a split now? Yeah. <clears throat> yes, please. So I need a, an early that's years and a health split. Right. Um, 56,000 to health, health 13,000 to leisure, and the balance to early learning. Councillor Benny, why do we have to agree that percentage now? Does yes. that have to be done now? Yes, he's just told us. It, it does. It does. It does. Yes. I don't know if you're in agreement with that. Morning. Anybody else got more? Sorry, Councillor Davis. I just want to know that the fifty-six thousand for help actually includes not only just George Clare but but the ambulance service because they expressly said they needed. Yes. 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 Okay. That is part and parcel of the health. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to move on now. So we're, we, we're all happy with the, um, the split, as so we say. So I'm going to finish this debate now. I think we've gone on as long as we can. I think I'm going to bring in officers now for a summing up. I think they probably have summed up, but uh, they may want something else to say. Uh, yeah, again, um, apologies. I'm having a moment today. Um, <laughs> I think we all are. Might have been wax blocking the sawdust in the middle. Um, you said 13,000 to leisure. No, libraries. libraries. That's it. Libraries. Thank you. Libraries. Sorry libraries. to be hard yeah. of hearing. No, no it, worries. It's actually 13,747, but I'm sure you can round them up. Yeah. We've, all had a hard, we've all had a hard week, so I'm, I'm sure you have as well, guys. So, right, that's it then. I'm going to end this debate. We've gone on long enough. So, and you, you don't need more, you haven't got any more to say. Thank goodness for that. Um, so, as mentioned previously, I should be looking for a proposal to go with officer recommendation to grant planning permission with those conditions in it. And uh, that's the 106. And the 106. We can't forget the 106 um, with the conditions. Also, I would like to add the conditions, uh, although it's been said by the agent that the sweeper and the wheel wash facility, that's a given. Also add that in as well, please. Um, with the conditions and perhaps I would like to look at the conditions if I'm alive uh, when this finally gets if, if this if this sort finally gets sorted out I'd like to have a look at the conditions yeah so, so, so basically it's delegated to authority to yeah. tweak the conditions as needed yeah. having run them past yourself and I, yeah, and I should think Councillor Benny does as well I, I think so with that yeah of course you can in the conditions, is it possible to to ask highways to look at the crossing again? Because there was major concern yesterday when we were there. None of us could see what, what and whether it comes at 20 mile an hour or 30 mile an hour, if a child is crossing that road, there's, there's a serious accident. Uh, through you, Chairman, the, the, as has been outlined by uh, the case officer uh, and myself, the visibility splays were shown on the drawing. Those visibility displays are created through changes to the road geometry, removal of vegetation, and the, I think it was 43 metres visibility display is, is standard given the road speed. Um, so it's a, a standard national methodology that is used. So I'm, uh, and it's passed a, a road safety audit, so I'm completely satisfied. And, and I do believe uh, it'll have to go through a stage two audit as well. 
and it has to be from somebody not in county council. It has to be from another uh, another depot, hypothetically in Ipswich. So there can be no collusion at all. It has to have to. That's what it was in Ponders Bridge. So I, I've seen no way that why it wouldn't be here. But Councillor Marks, is there also any way of conditioning regarding the safeguarding of Gall Road? It's, yeah. it's in the room, yeah, but that's in, I think years. 30 years, but it does concern me they will come back in five years or 10 years. I think we need, if we can safeguard that. Yeah, through you, Chairman, as I mentioned uh, earlier in the meeting, uh, you, you can't put a condition that prevents no. somebody from putting in a planning application. Okay, so with, so we've got the conditions, I think, are just about right now. So I'm looking for a proposal on this scheme to go with officer's recommendation to approve this. Have I got a, have I got a proposer? Councillor French. So Councillor French is proposing we go with officer's recommendation to approve this application with those conditions applied. Have I got a seconder? I'll say Councillor Marks. So to sum it all up, we've got a... Um, yeah, yes. Absolutely. So we've got a proposition to go with officer's recommendation to approve this application by Councillor French, seconded by Councillor Marks. All those in favour of that on that resolution. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Yeah, So the application has been approved with those conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, members. Thank you very much, everybody else. Thank you. I'll just con I'll just stop this meeting at twenty to f twenty to four. Thank you very much. <laughs>